Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is a beehive of activity, non-political for a change, as the eyes of the baseball world focus on the 23rd annual All-Star Game in Griffith Stadium. Home plate umpire Charlie Burry, summer fedora and all, explains the ground rules to American League manager Casey Stengel on the left, and Brooklyn's Walt Alston, the guiding hand of the senior circuit. National League President Warren Giles poses with some of his stars. Left to right, Willie Mays of New York, Cincinnati's Ted Klazuski, Brooklyn's Duke Snyder, and Stan the Man Musial of St. Louis. Two of the finest young stars in the game are Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees on the left and Ken Boyer of the St. Louis Cardinals. Cincinnati's 20-year-old rookie sensation Frank Robinson will patrol left field for the National League. He rose from obscurity to become the fan's choice. National League starting pitcher Bob Friend of the Pittsburgh Pirates does a little photographing of his own before game time. The capacity throng gets a real thrill at the start. Detroit's Harvey Keene lines toward third, but Ken Boyer makes a fantastic grab for the out. Lefty Billy Pierce of the Chicago White Sox fires, and St. Louis' is Ken Boyer wraps the game for safety in the second inning. A clean single to center field. attempts the steal of second, but he's a dead duck from Yogi Berra to Harvey Keene, and it's a scoreless ball game after two innings. Red Lake shortstop Roy McMillan walks on a 3-2 pitch in the National League third. Pitcher Bob Friend lays down a beautiful sacrifice punt and is out. Here's the Nelly Fox with McMillan moving to second. With two down, Johnny Temple of Cincinnati finds the safety to center field, and Roy McMillan scores. This sets it out a 1-2 punch, gives the National League a 1-0 lead after three innings. Yankee Southpaw, White and Ford, released for the American League in the fourth, and Ken Boyer gets his second straight hit, a liner to left field. Willie Mays pinch hits for Gus Bell and loses his cap swinging at the first four delivery. But on the next pitch, Willie loses the ball as he lost a tremendous fly deep into the left field bleachers for a home run. Ken Boyer drops over the dish for the National League's second run, and Willie May follows suit as Willie's towering two-run blast gives the senior circuit a 3 to nothing lead after four. A single and a ground ball put Johnny Temple on second in the Nationals' fifth. Then Ken Boyer tags Chicago's Jim Wilson for his third straight hit. The Temple feeds across the plate to give the National League a 4 to nothing advantage. The 25-year-old Boyer is playing a sensational ball. Once again, he robs Detroit's Harvey Keene with an Detroit backhand stop and throw in the fifth inning. Real highway robbery. Boston's Tom Brewer comes to the American League Hill in the sixth. And pitch hitter Ted Kozuski of Cincinnati, batting for Dale Long of Pittsburgh, greets him with a long drive into the left field corner. It's good for two bases. Once again, Cincinnati ball players predominate. Roy McMillan drops a blue single just out of the reach of second baseman Nelly Fox, and Kozuski moves to third. With Milwaukee's Warren Spawn at the plate, Brewer uncorks a wild pitch, and Kozuski tents the plate to make the scoreboard read 5 to nothing. Milwaukee's Warren Spawn fires, and Chicago's Nelly Fox brings the American League alive in the sixth with a line single to left center field. All-time All-Star Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox sends a gigantic fly that keeps gaining momentum as it goes. The ball lands in the distant center field bullpen, 438 feet from home plate for a majestic two-run homer. The blow, Williams' is fourth in all-star competition, narrows the National League advantage to 5-2. to two. Next up, Mickey Mantle of the Yankees connects on a spawn fastball and lines into the lower deck of the left field stand for a home run. Mickey, who struck out his first two times up, brings the American League closer at 5-3. Johnny Antonelli of the New York Giants comes on the pitch, and he gets into trouble. But George Cal of Baltimore becomes a double play victim, then the inning with the National League leading 5-3 after 6. All-Star 
our history is made in the seventh. As Stan the Man Musial of St. Louis powers the Tom Brewer offering into the first row of the left center field bleachers for a home run. This is Stan's fifth round tripper in all-star competition, an all-time record. The Nationals lead six to three. The rally continues as Willie Mays walks, then Ted Krasinski slams a hit and run safety into the right field corner. Even though right fielder Al Kaline makes a fine play, the hustling Mays slides in with a run, and Krasinski has his second straight double. In the last of the eighth, gets set for another gem. Ted Williams pops toward short left, and St. Louis Cardinal Ken Boyer and Stan Musial almost have a head-on collision. Musial hangs on to the ball for the out, and miraculously, neither man is hurt. The National League, paced by the fine play of Ken Boyer, Willie Mays, Stan Musial, and Ted Mazuski, and the pitching of Bob Friend and Johnny Antonelli, defeat the American League 7-3. The series now stands 13-10 in favor of the Americans, but the Nationals have won six of the last seven.